Hello, welcome to this online service from First Remore Presbyterian Church on Sunday the 7th of March. You are so welcome as um, we're glad that you're joining us this morning for worship. We would love to invite you to join us for other online events this week. This morning we are meeting using Zoom at 11 for a coffee time to chat and to catch up. If you're watching this before 11 then please do join us on Zoom. The Zoom details were sent out with yesterday's emails. And if you need help connecting that way, do contact me. It was a, a great to catch up with some folk last week. And it would be lovely to see you and to catch up with you again this week. We also have online midweek messages going out. and They're available on YouTube every Wednesday. We're currently studying through Isaiah 53 and thinking about how we see the gospel in this wonderful Old Testament song. Um, the first few messages are available on YouTube now, so go and check those out if you haven't had an opportunity to do that yet. Um, and then this week, uh, a new message will go up on Wednesday. And from this week, we're also going to put those onto our phone line as well from Thursday. So if you're listening to the service um, on the phone line, do do that before Wednesday, please. And then that will change to the midweek from Thursday to allow those who can only access the phone line to be part of our midweek gatherings as well. On Wednesday evening, since we have went into this period of lockdown, we have been meeting to pray at 8pm. And we've been using Zoom to do that, and that's been a really good time to connect through the week. A nice point for us to see each other, to come together, and to pray together. Um, The details for that Zoom meeting were circulated with the email. I want to encourage you to join us, if you can, on Zoom at 8pm for prayer. And if you can't, maybe set aside some time on Wednesday evening to pray as well. If you're not on the email list, and so I'm saying these links are sent out with the email and you're not getting that, or if you think you were on it and you've dropped off, there's been a few technical issues with that and some human error, I'm sure, on my part. Um, Do let me know. We'd love to keep you connected in that way and put you onto that mailing list. Just let me know and we'll get you connected in that way. But this morning, we come here now to worship God. And over the next few weeks as we approach Easter, we're going to be thinking very much about the cross of Christ. And this morning we're thinking about how peace is accomplished through the cross of Christ. So we're going to read some words from Romans 5 as we come to focus our hearts and minds on the worship of God. This is God's word. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were still God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We come to worship our great God who has made peace with us through the Lord Jesus today as we sing our opening praise, reflecting on his great love for us. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Let us worship God together.
let's come and join our hearts together as we pray and seek God's face, as we bring our prayers of adoration and confession to him now. Let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we come today and praise you and give thanks to you for your goodness and your mercy to us. We come and we rejoice in your love and we hope in your faithfulness. Today as we worship with Easter in sight, we ask that you would help us to walk on the path set before us in today's difficult circumstances with the same faithful determination with which Jesus set himself to go to Jerusalem. Father, we praise you for how your love and faithfulness to us were supremely displayed on the cross of Christ as he laid down his life for us. Help us to walk in the way of the Saviour, to live the cross-shaped lives of love and faithfulness towards each other that he modelled for us. Lord, as we contemplate the cross, we are reminded of your great love for us. But we are also reminded of our sinfulness that made the cross necessary, for how we have sinned against you with our thoughts and our words and our deeds, for how we have lived in ways that have not honoured you, how we have lived in ways that have opposed you and your will. We come to say sorry today. We pray that you would forgive us, that you would remember your great mercy and love. Do not remember our sins and our rebellious ways, but guide us in your truth and teach us to walk in your ways, O God our Saviour. We confess that at times we do grow weary in well-doing. The troubles of this past year have taken their toll on us. And so we ask that as we wait on you today, would you renew our strength? Would you strengthen our feeble arms and our weak knees and make straight paths for us to walk on? Father, we thank you today for sending Jesus to earth to seek and to save the lost to make peace between man and you. Father, we thank you for the great love of the shepherd who leaves the 99 to seek out the one lost and lonely stray. As we contemplate your care this morning, we are astounded by your compassion for us. Father, as we have been singing today, your love is as vast as the ocean. It is boundless and it is beyond measure. We ask that as we meditate on your great love for us revealed on the cross, would you enable us to grow in our love for you and for each other. We rejoice, Lord, that your grace and mercy flows to us daily like mighty rivers, bringing your peace and justice to us. Father, we pray that your peace would overwhelm all of our anxious hearts and all of our anxious thoughts just now, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and we're going to read from verses 14 through to 21. Paul is teaching here about Christ's love and about how God reconciles us to himself through Jesus' death on the cross. Let us hear God's word. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died and he died for all that Those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. And we pray that God would bless the reading of his word to our hearts and minds today. Hello boys and girls. I hope you're well. Thank you for joining us for this online service today. It's good to have you with us. I wonder, did you have a good week? Did you do anything different or special for World Book Day on Thursday? Maybe you dressed up uh, for school or maybe you read your favourite book. Uh, Do you like books? Do you like reading? Um... I wonder what you think makes a good book. Is it good storytelling or is it really interesting characters? Or maybe it's humour. I like a really funny book. But one of the things that I think make a really good book 
are the pictures. I love a book with really good illustrations. Isabella and Jemima are really enjoying reading Roald Dahl books at the moment. And if I'm honest, I'm enjoying reading them to them as well because they're great. This is one of my favourite Roald Dahl's books. Fantastic Mr Fox. Have you ever read it? I love it. One of the things that I love about a good Roald Dahl book is that lots of them have been illustrated by a man called Quentin Blake. And I like his illustrations. His pictures help me to imagine the story. His pictures help me to see what Roald Dahl is trying to say. I wonder if you have ever heard the expression, a picture paints a thousand words. A picture paints a thousand words. Have you ever heard that before? What it means is that sometimes a picture or an illustration can say far more than lots of words. You know that, don't you? When you're reading through a book, you can look at the picture and the picture will sometimes tell you tell you what's going to happen or what has happened before you read any of the text. That's one of the reasons why we use symbols in different spheres of life. Symbols are pictures that say a lot very simply. If you're travelling somewhere where they don't speak English, then symbols can be really helpful because you can see the picture and you can know and understand what it's saying straight away without trying to translate into another language. You know, there's different symbols we see about the place. Don't we? Do you recognise this symbol? It's a, a wheelchair image, isn't it? And sometimes we see it in parking spaces. And that picture tells us that this parking space is reserved for a very special kind of person. Only people with a special blue badge are able to park in this space. But that would take a lot of paint to write that in a parking space, wouldn't it? It would take a lot of time to read. Only people with blue badges can park in this here space. That would take a long time. So we use the image, the disability image, the wheelchair image, to paint that picture, to, to say lots with very little. Or if you saw a green cross on the side of a building, then you would know that that building's a pharmacy and you can go there to get medicines. Or if you're watching the weather forecast or looking at the weather forecast in the newspaper and you see the images, you can see very quickly what the weather's going to be like. Is it going to rain today or is it going to be sunny? You don't need to read lots of text. You can see very quickly. Symbols say a lot very easily. If a teacher puts a tick on your work, then you know it means your work is good and correct. And if you get a star as well, then you know it was really, really good, don't you? You see, symbols and pictures say a lot more than words. I wonder, does anyone know what the symbol of Christianity is? Do you know? That's right, the, the symbol of Christianity is a cross. The cross is where Jesus died. And the Bible verse that I read at the start of the service that said this, that God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love for us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. And so Christians all over the world use the cross as a symbol, as a symbol of our faith and trust in Jesus. The cross is a symbol of God's love for us. We tend to think that the heart is maybe a symbol of God's love, isn't it? But according to the Bible, the real symbol of love is the cross because that's where God showed his love for us. The cross of Jesus tells us how much he loves us. He didn't have to die on the cross. He could easily have stepped down from it. He didn't have to suffer, but he wanted to. He stayed there on the cross because he loves us. Because he knew that there was no other way for us to be forgiven for our sins. Jesus gave his life for us. And there is no greater love than this. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be thinking about some other things that the cross represents for us as well. But for today, I want you to remember that the cross is a symbol of God's love for us. And every time you see a cross this week, I want you to remember that Jesus loves you. Let's pray and thank him for that great love. Father, we thank you that you love us and you care for us. We thank you for your great love shown for us on the cross. We pray that you would help us to love you and to love each other. Help us every time we see a cross this week to remember your great love for us. And may that bring us great comfort and great hope. As in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.